Good afternoon, everyone. Rick Garcia, G12 Communications today. Welcome to another episode, episode 22, in fact, of everything Teams Phone Live, the only podcast on LinkedIn that's dedicated to Microsoft Teams Phone, hosted by yours truly and Mr. Brandon Bradley, CTO of G12. That's uh, it. I was just, I was just thinking, Rick, uh, episode 22. So we're like halfway through the year, roughly, um, season one, uh, feels like just yesterday was episode one. I know, I know we're, we're 22 deep and the consistency has been fun focusing on delivering a message to the community, delivering a message to Microsoft, uh, uh, consultants, delivering a message to enterprises and customers and SMBs and the, uh, in the LinkedIn verse. <laughs> so, so it's actually been, uh, it's been quite the, uh, education for us as well, right? Getting the opportunity to interview people like last week, we had a great guest on in Randy Chapman, UC status blogger, uh, out in the UK and, uh, MVP Microsoft expert in a lot of things. And it just enhances. I mean, I love learning new stuff about Microsoft teams because you, you obviously know, Brandon, how I feel about it, how I think it's the best thing since sliced bread. We've said that over and over again here on the show. But it's awesome to be able to take in information from real experts in the field and, and be able to consume that. And uh, every week we have something pretty special. This week, Brandon, this week we've got it's, something really cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I maybe it's worth starting with with our press release. I don't know if you're planning on sharing that or I, I, I will, I will share that. I will share that. Let's, let's do some, that here. Some pretty exciting news. I've, I've obviously been buried in the last week since, you know, since press release, even before press release went out, just getting ready for this demo to, to show off what, what this announcement is all about. Well, here you go. I'm going to show you uh, an image we just did this morning and it tells the story. So I'm not going to share the press release. The press release is out. I'll let you announce what this is, Brandon. Okay. I'll let you uh, announce what this is, but I'm going to share this picture. Uh, you do the honors and share what this means. Yeah, this is, this is pretty big and I'm, I'm probably not going to do it justice. So if, if our Lou Ware friends are, are on this call, don't, don't, sh do not shoot the messenger because, um, I'm still drinking from a fire hose, but this, this is pretty big news. I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Rick, we dropped the press release. Was it Monday morning? Uh, or was it two? I think was it, it was Wednesday? Wednesday, Wednesday Damn, morning. I, I, my weeks, I, I can't keep track of the days. But yeah, it this was is Wednesday morning to coincide with Converse <clears throat> in the UK. Okay. okay. So Wednesday, see, I can't even tell what day it is. We announced a very strategic partnership with a company out of the UK called Luware. And for those not aware of who this company is, this is a extended teams integrated full featured contact center and you know what we're going to do today is we're going to show an aspect of it i'm not prepared to go into the the full-on contact center components of it yet but we're gonna we're just gonna kind of go through and do a, a a basic demo of their attendant console because we we obviously um you know firsthand rick we're getting asked about it more and more uh for for larger companies that have multiple office locations so we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about that. And then following that, or maybe mixed in with it, is also our new Teams text messaging application where we can bring true P2P SMS into Teams and keep you focused on productivity in Teams where it matters. Love it. Love it. Well done, Brandon. I'm going to, there's an applause right there. Uh. <sighs> Putting on Where's my my marketing hat, even though there I'm not marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this picture does depict that. It's like uh, you get the Teams phone with and, and dial tone with G12 communications. You get the Luware Extend Model Contact Center solution. And I'm going to show you. I've got an image here that shows the listeners out there what the Extend integration means. There's a lot of contact centers, even the. If you look at the Magic Quadrant contact centers, those are connected to Microsoft via a Connect model, which basically means they're you know kind of docking in the Microsoft environment there. The Extend model is quite different, Brandon, and I think it's worth talking about what that is. So we'll go into that when I bring the image up here in a second. But what this picture depicts is G12, you add the contact center, 
you add our G12 text messaging in Teams that is amazing, and you deliver that, and that's my fraction in a cloud right there, right? You deliver yeah. that all over Operator Connect. And so what this episode is all about, it's the show and tell of the solution that is um, taking the industry by storm putting it all together for organizations, hitting the easy button for organizations that are going, there's so much teams, things to learn and understand. We do all that for you and we deliver it in a beautiful little bundle of productivity. Yeah, and, and as a reminder, obviously all of the native teams features and functionality still sit right behind all of that, right? So you're, you're still, you still have access to everything that Microsoft is offering you from a, Teams collaboration perspective. Ah, there we are in London in Lou Wear Blue. Brandon, unfortunately, I, you were the uh, one taking the picture. You know, I, I'm going to start charging royalty for this so that it's <laughs> less of an embarrassing story about how I missed the memo that I was supposed to be wearing a blue shirt. Instead, I was wearing a white hoodie, I believe, that day. <laughs> That's why I'm rounds. not in the picture. <laughs> it's made its rounds. Lou Wear Blue on by G12 even, and Lou Wear. I mean, yeah, I, I'm just now noticing even their water bottle was blue. <laughs> I'm like the the British must love blue. I you know you don't have to be British to love blue because if you go into my closet, Brandon, you've got a lot of every blue. shade of blue and probably some shades of black and uh, you know not a whole lot of uh, color in you know <laughs> no reds and pinks and stuff like that in my closet. Pretty pretty bland. Yeah. Okay, let's let's do this. I want to talk about. Um, why this whole thing is important. And I want to show why the extend model is important. And I think we'll just start here. And this is a good sort of discussion to have. So you, so the, 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 the listeners understand what the extend model is. Why don't you kind of try to explain what that is, Brandon? Yeah. I mean, so you got, you've got a couple different designs to um, kind of layer in over teams from a, kind of a voice productivity standpoint um, where, you're, where you're trying to deliver the phone call into the, the team's client. The, the diagram that we're showing on the screen is the, the deeper level of integration within Microsoft Teams where the, the, the value add here is G12 or any way that the PSTN is being delivered gets to stay in the native call flow. There's no altering the actual call flow to then take that call and and add feature and functionality on top of it. Things like auto attendance, um, you know, skill-based routing and contact centers, or <clears throat> attendant console that we're going to show later, or even call re compliance-based call recording that sits over the top of that. Whereas the other model, you know, the Connect model is where you've got to you've got to rely on your carrier, your your voice carrier partner to take that call and fork it off to another calling platform that's maybe out of the carrier's control, that then you're you're relying on that to bring the call back into Microsoft via some other direct routing mechanism. Mm. So this, okay. what, yeah. what we're doing with Luware is this model here where you make a call through, say, G12 Operator Connect. G12 holds that call for the duration of the call. We don't send that call anywhere else. I love that. I love that. I mean, that just simplifies everything for, for organizations, right? So uh, just so I'm clear, call comes in. If you're on a, a competing sort of contact center solution that is connected via the connect model, they say, hey, we, we're teams, we integrate with teams. Uh, it comes in and the call goes out to that contact center and comes back to the agent again. So you've got calls going back and forth through a, or through, you know, through us as a carrier, as an example, we do do trunks out from our solution, from our SBCs that also activate teams. So you'd have a trunk coming in, you know, or from your team's call going out to that carrier or to that uh, software provider, the contact center software provider coming back over to us with the, you know, treatment that they're going to give that call then delivered back to the agent. So you've got this back and forth. Whereas what you're saying here, the extend integration, the extend architecture is that call is manipulated and, and it's applied treatment uh, right inside teams. Is that correct? Yeah and, yeah. and what's cool about that is now there's, there's not, you know, with the other model, you're going to have to keep track of multiple portals to keep track of your, your number inventory and what's routing to where, whereas this, all your numbers live in Operator Connect in your voice number management within TAC, Teams Admin Center. 
it's all native to Teams phone system. And then, of course, our partnership with Luar, you know, they're they're leaning on that extended integration via, you know, API and probably some ACS magic here and there to, to do the work over the top of uh, the service we're delivering from an Operator Connect call flow perspective. Very good, man. This is awesome. So this is super exciting just to have a single source for texting, contact center, dial tone, and even sales or, or even support, right? So you've got managed services. So you've got a full on team solution. Like I said, all buttoned up with some uh, bows of productivity delivered mm -hmm. to customers. And so that's, that's pretty exciting for us as an organization uh, because we're all about, uh, the white glove treatment when it comes to delivering service to our customers uh, and making sure they are uh, supported in every way they, they could possibly be supported. And so this is super cool to be able to bring uh, different solutions into the Microsoft Teams environment for our customers. It just goes to show the modularity of Teams. We kind of talked about that with Randy last week, right? That modularity of Teams where you can put different solutions in here, yet it's all single pane of glass it's all mm -hmm. you know contained within your single tech stack as an example so that organizations again the productivity is uh is is the big benefit here all right well brandon let's do this let's uh, let's shift you know i always i i it's i've got a love hate relationship with powerpoints you know it's like uh you need them to explain a couple of points mm -hmm. right um but you get tired of them if there's too many slides. So I'm going to I'm going to say this is I'm going to I'm going to stop with the slides at this point Brandon and we're going to put you on the spot and we're going to have you show today we're going to show parts of Luware's context and of the attendant console is what we're going to show today. Um, in fact, uh, we, sh we there was customers I think it was 3 or 4 times yesterday customers came to us and said let's see that let's see that let's mm -hmm. see that let's see that uh so that's pretty exciting mm -hmm. to be able to as soon as you announce something have people come to us going yeah that we need that um so we'll show that and then once we have a good grasp on what that looks like and feels like and and customers can see or our listeners can see how it works we're going to pivot then to text messaging text messaging let's just talk about that for a second you know not a lot of emphasis was put on text messaging by Microsoft Teams, right? Uh, and uh, what's interesting is that um, worldwide, texting is not a big deal at all worldwide. I mean, uh, other channels are more um, uh, are are are, are pop more popular worldwide than text messaging. I'll give you an example. WhatsApp is a massive, massive channel globally. Right, because of its ease of use from a from a global perspective, so uh, so it's not you know text messaging isn't popular in in Europe as an example where text messaging is very very popular and where the uptake of text messaging is almost every customer that's going into Teams in some way shape or form is in the U.S. In the U.S., text messaging is still still reigns supreme over. The channels with when it comes to uh, communicating with customers. So you've got voice and you've got texting as the two major channels dominating the conversation here in the U.S. And then web chat is uh, followed by web chat. So text messaging needed to be addressed. And we have addressed it here at G12 Communications in a very, very cool way. So we're going to show that right after the Luware presentation here. Is that right, Brandon? Yep, that is correct. All geared up, PC ready to roll, things all cooled down. <clears throat> well, a couple, of, let's, a couple of ice packs on it. You know, uh, yeah, I was going to say, let's hope it all goes well. I will say this, this is totally irrelevant to our audience probably, but you can relate because yesterday you had me teed up for a demo, right? I'm in, you know, south of downtown Denver in the tech center, right when a tornado hit. And so I was sweating bullets. I'm like, man, I got, I got huge hail hitting me from every direction the wind's blowing and i'm supposed to be on a demo so the good news today the sun is shining and so far my computer seems to be running okay there so we go knock on wood here we go all right let's do it hit the present button and brandon let's kick this thing off everyone watch this this gets really cool let's see there we go Make sure I'll I'll just I guess I'd you know I'll 
confirm with you, Rick. You see my screen. I assume I if do. you see it, then I do the audience see the sees it. All right. Yep. So, uh, you know, we've spent obviously several episodes talking about, you know, just Teams phone in general and what the dial pad looks like, what the functionality looks like, and what you can do with it. So what we're doing today is we're going to take it one step further and we're going to talk about an attendant console. So if I'm a, a business and I've got maybe a, a couple office locations where I have maybe reception sitting there to, you know, greet people as they come into the lobby or, or you know, front end the phone calls and, and shuffle them off to the departments um, as needed. That's what we're going to demo today. So what I've done before I share that piece of it is I've set up a scenario where G12 has two offices, one where you're sitting in, in where the headquarters are sitting in Kirkland, Washington, um, and then where I'm sitting in Denver, Colorado. And while I don't have you assigned to an attendant console, I did assign one of our other people to that attendant console, and then I'm assigned to the Denver, Colorado uh, attendant console. So let's pop over there. I don't know if we want to go straight to it or if we want to show and tell anything else. Now let's just go right into this and then we'll, we'll show the surroundings here okay. in a moment. So I'm going to pop into this little attendant console and it's, you know, at first glance, it just looks kind of like a dashboard, if you will. But essentially what you need to understand is if I look at real quick, I do need to touch on this. If I look at the services aspect, you can see there is this Denver, Colorado attendant console and you can see that I'm, in that console and i'm available and i'm toggled to active then you can see that there is the attendant console in kirkland washington where carmen is supposed to be taking calls but you can see that she's not available so what that means is oh, go ahead let, let me ask you a question no, i want to i want to take a step back here can it let's let's explain what services are so it's like you know i i can see my services here what do you mean by i can see my services here the services are going to be the, the, the I'm going to call it the the call flows or the channels, if you want to talk about omni-channel, the channels that you as a user, an agent, are assigned to. So it could be anything from, you can see here, I've got a demo contact center with agents in it. I'm assigned to that, right? That's a service that I can participate in, right? I can be an active agent in a skilled call queue. Um, Attendant console is considered a service, even though it's an application, it's considered a service that I'm assigned to, which means I can serve that auto attended if I choose to. Um, and, and same with the other. Uh, Very good. Console. Very good. Thank you. So this is any service you're assigned to. You're going to see this in, in your services kind of caught heads up display um, and kind of very quickly be able to tell what's just from a snapshot viewpoint, what's going on. Um, and the cool thing about what Luware has done is they've even kind of color coded it. So you can, from my perspective, I can tell what I'm a part of actively with, with these green or gray headers. So you can see I'm part of the contact center. I'm going to take myself out of the contact center and you can see I've turned service off to that. So now I'm not going to receive a call that's serving into the contact center. So it's like logging in and out of a queue as an example. Is that is that yep. uh, a fair assessment? So if I'm yep. old school here and I've got a queue that I'm logging into, I say old school, I'm not just a, a cloud PBX or or a physical, and I'm logging into a queue or logging out of a queue, this would be the same thing. I am logging into a service, which means I'm logging into a queue or I'm, I'm making myself available for a queue or an attended console or something like that, yeah? Yeah, and there's there's multiple places that you can do this. This is just uh, overall service view right let's say i'm in a contact center and i'm serving multiple skills or multiple queues there would be a spot where i could maybe say hey sales is overwhelmed right now i'm going to go put myself into sales right and it's all part of the same service this is taking me completely out of the service whether i'm serving sales and support or just sales or just support um, so i'm completely out of that service now very good. Got it. Thank you. Um, so right now I'm I'm receiving uh, calls for Denver, Colorado for the G12 office. And you can see on the service is the, the frontline number for that attendant console. So people dialing the 303 number, they're going to fall right into this attendant console. Um, there's going to be a problem with the Kirkland, Washington attendant console because 
while Carmen is actively serving it, she's not available. I Means she she could be on another call. She maybe put herself in do not disturb, whatever the case may be. Um, so the the really cool thing, and we actually just demoed this the other day, and and I think as we were demoing it, I think you know it was to a traditional office location. They had two office locations, and you know they're hard phone based, right? They're traditionally hard phone based customer of of whoever their service provider is. And this idea that someone in Denver, Colorado can also pick up the slack for what's the shortage in, in Washington is, I, I think that just kind of, that made them sit back in their chair because they're in their minds, they're thinking, but the attendant console is on the desk in Kirkland, Washington. There's no way we can serve that. Um, where yeah, I just and, came and to in be able and, to flip I flipped a button, right? And now calls can be directed to this attended console or this person in, in Denver, and they can just take the calls for the office while maybe the person goes to lunch, right? So they go to right. lunch, let's flip it over to the other office. The other office takes their, takes their calls. They go to lunch, they flip the calls, all the calls over to the other attended console. Yep. Very, very cool. And, and for organizations that still run offices and that are in the office, they're coming back to the office and, and ha- who have reception in hand, um, or high volume calling. This is something that is really, really nice to direct calls to. And wait till you see the actual uh, capabilities here. Yeah. Well, the the other one, the, the last thing I'll point out here before we actually go back into the uh, the attendant console is, mm-hmm. you know, from a from a display perspective, where I can kind of just get a, a quick overview of the service that that is being delivered to at least to certain aspects of the business. Let's say that I've got a team of people that are serving the auto attendants. And I come over here, I'm, I'm helping with Denver, Colorado, but I, I can pop in here and let's say I see that, oh, Carmen's not available, but I can see that maybe there's a call queued up or maybe there's five calls queued up. I can very quickly assess, oh, I, I better jump in and help out. And so I can just pop myself into service. And as soon as I do, if there's a call in queue, it's going to, and I'm not on the call in, in Colorado, it's going to pop that next call over to me. I love that. It's just ensuring your customer's journey is a good experience. I mean, that's just really what it comes down to, right? I mean, there's two components, uh, you know, here that we work with when you're talking about Microsoft Teams. Number one, I've said it again, like a thousand times already on this call, the productivity piece of it. And the other piece of it is, is your customer's journey, Mm -hmm. right? So when you've got the ability to create, uh, you know, an, an amazing customer experience or even a tailored customer experience, right? And you gain productivity from your organization. This is where we see Microsoft Teams just hands, just flat out winning, right? I was gonna say hands down winning, but flat out they're just winning in the space because they're able to create experiences for customers instantaneously in 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 the different applications that we can bring into Microsoft Teams. And then you couple that with the productivity that it also uh, uh, produces, you just have a winning combination here. So this is, pre- this is pretty exciting overall. I mean, I know that we kind of geek out about this, everyone. Uh, and if you're an organization listening, trust me, this is fantastic. It's amazing. Uh, but if you're uh, a Microsoft TC or if you're uh, a Microsoft account manager, uh, we love what you guys are doing and driving out, driving you know, Microsoft Teams phone into organizations because we're doing the same exact thing, driving Microsoft Teams into organizations because we're, we're, we're all in on this just because we see it. We've been this for, uh, I can't tell you how many years. Uh, one interesting fact I'm going to bring up here, Brandon, while we're both on the call here and we're both talking about our, our sort of experience here, both Brandon and I came from a wholesale organization called 360 Networks, which we ultimately sold to a company called Zayo in 2011. What's interesting is in that role, You have a purview that's very different than most other carriers in the space. And Brandon, you don't even know where I'm going with this, but I bet you do. What, why do you think we have a special purview, Brandon? What what do you, what do you, where do you think I'm going with this? Oh man, I, you know, this is my opinion. It may not be where you're going, but you know, having spent so many years in, in the big carrier space, um, gives me a, a level of knowledge about the the underpinning solution that, you know, people don't know about, they don't think about, they take it for granted on how service is actually delivered up into, as an example, Microsoft Teams. 
And for us to be able to understand that and then turn around and understand the enterprise space and what the enterprise needs are and, and what productivity looks like, I think that gives us a, uh, at least for me, it gives me a much broader viewpoint. Um, so when I go have a conversation with a customer, you know, it, it allows me to open perspectives that maybe aren't considered otherwise. I don't know if that's yeah. where you're headed. No. That's where well, that, that's, that's, that's part of it. The other part of this is that we get to see, we, we, we had an opportunity to see, you know, most all of the largest providers out there, uh, in the space, what their platforms could do. We delivered services into their platforms. And so what we had the opportunity of uh, our education essentially from that space is really, uh, the competitive landscape right? If that is that, that Microsoft team sits in. And so you can see the different carriers out in the space. You understand what their, um, what their offerings look like. And now you see Microsoft teams and, and we do have this special purview where we go, wow, this is the best thing, right? This is the best platform I've ever seen. And that's so exciting to, to engage in it. All right, let's, let's get into the, let's get into this, into this attended console because we well, can turn services on where you're in Denver, you're taking some calls. What does it look like? Yep. So I've actually put myself into the Kirkland, Washington, um, attendant console as well. Just, you know, maybe we demo a couple, a couple times, but, you know, back into the attendant console again, I can also flip myself in and out from right here, right? I, I can't necessarily see who's serving the queue. I just see that I'm active in the attendant consoles, but if I need to quickly step away, I can just toggle myself up out from here. I don't have to switch screens. Um, so there's, you know, from a heads up display perspective, this is a, a pretty simple layout to understand. I can see how many calls are in queue. I can see, you know, who, who's been waiting. I can see where the service is coming from, meaning when a call comes in and you'll see this when I demo this, you're going to see that, oh, because I'm in both attendant consoles, I need to understand, am I answering on behalf of Denver, Colorado, or am I answering on behalf of Kirkland, Washington? Um, and then once I'm connected, obviously it kind of keeps track of, you know, who I'm talking to and, and how long I've been talking. Uh, and again, the state of the attendant console from there, I've got a queue where you'll see the list of calls starting to queue up. And then, you know, again, it's just like any other attendant console. You just click through to handle the calls. Um, I can see whether they're, you know, the call moves from queue to incoming, meaning if it's incoming, it means it's looking for the person in this case, me to ring, you know, so it can go out and ring my phone so I can answer it. And then it, if I answer it, it's going to show an active call that I'm actively on the call. And then if I park the call, you know, it, it's going to show the call parked. Am I dialing For, Denver? In just in one second, the last piece is just the, how you want to manage your, your, the way you're going to transfer these calls, the way you're going to interact with the people you need to transfer calls to, um, and, and this is customizable on a per user basis. It's not hard coded to the the attendant console. So the cool thing about this is, you know, if you think about a traditional uh, attendant console, they were button based, right? You had the big uh, sidecars that would button up to the phone, and it was buttons were hard coded to specific destinations or specific people. Whereas my view of the attendant console, maybe it's I build my top 10 or top 50 list that I'm dealing with. And Rick, if you're logged in, you're not necessarily, you don't necessarily have purview to that. You could build your own. Now you can build shared contact lists, right? So you can get a traditional um, kind of, I'll call it sidecar feel for unification across the organization, but just, just calling that out. I like it. I like so it. So with that, so yeah, let's is that where where does that where do the context come from? I, I like I, I see the AD uh logo <clears> on some of those <throat> and then I see something else. What where do those come from? The so the um today where I'm pulling them from is they are coming from the Office 365 directory. Um this attendant console, I I have this pinned. This is um, you know, the the Luware Nimbus attendant console, but ultimately behind the scenes, it's actually also pulling from Office 365 because there is still a that resource account that sits behind it in in Microsoft. Mm -hmm. But I've pinned the attendant consoles just you know as an example of maybe maybe I need to take a call and drop it from one office to another, but I don't really need I don't know who it needs to go to, right? I just need to drop it off to the other office location. 
Um, and again, you could have like down here, I've got a sales queue. You can drop it to any number of, of functions, right? It doesn't have to be just to a user. It can be to outside numbers, meaning maybe I just need to transfer that completely off to someone's cell phone number or a call queue or whatever the case Excellent. may be. And oh, go ahead. And it, it can be, you know, it doesn't have to be Office 365 contacts, right? Blueware supports third party contact lists. I have not connected any for this demo, but it's very customizable under the hood how you want to set up your attendant console. All right, let's do it. Let's fire away. So, let, yeah, let me get, I'm actually going to answer this on my mobile teams just so that I'm not getting a bunch of feedback when you call. Um, so, you let uh, me you know when you've done. You yeah, let's let's dial um, three zero. That's not the number. Let me go. I gotta. Listeners, three zero three. Don't dial this while we're talking. Uh, don't dial this number. Listeners can dial it. They'll just get queued up. Three zero three five three one zero nine one zero. I'm gonna go back to the. Attendant if you're console. listening and you want to dial in and get queued up, let's watch it. That'd be pretty cool. Do it. All right, here we go. Let's uh, let's let's make a call here. Uh, and before it queues, you're going to get greeted with like an office greeting. So there's very customizable greetings you can do as well, right? I can, you know, you're going to call Denver and you're going to get told, thank you for calling G12 Communications. You've reached our Denver, Colorado office. You know, please hold while we blah, 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 whatever yep. it says. And then as soon as it's done, here comes the queue. You can see it's queued up, but it's already ringing me because I'm available. So I'm going to go ahead and answer. And I've answered and I've answered it on my cell phone, but you know, it's the team's client. I could, I could have answered it on my computer, but to, to prevent echo and feedback, I've decided to answer on my cell phone. Um, <clears throat> but here now you can see, I've got you as a caller sitting active in the attendant console from here. I can park the call, which puts you on hold, which then just plays back hold music and I can customize that to whatever I want it to be. And then from there, what we can do is we can come down here and we can, what's really cool about the office 365 integration is I can instantly see who presence wise, who's available and who is not available. So notice the attendant consoles are no longer available for taking a call, right? They're going to queue up because I'm the only one serving the attendant console right now. And you can see that I'm also busy. Um, I think it's hard. It's hard for our listeners to see that, but there is okay. a, uh, there is the, the presence available for there's the red and the green yep. that's available for, so you can see. Uh, yep. And that's, and that uh, just sinks, users. that just sinks right into the, you know, the team's presence list. <clears throat> so what I've done is I've logged into another user so that we can transfer this call. Um, just so they can kind of see the way that this happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to look up this user. He's more generically named OC user two. So that now I'm typing in and it's just going in real time and looking at the contact list, the office 365 contact list. So I, I find OC user two, I can see he's available, but maybe, maybe I want to just check really quick to see if he's available. So I can do, I can do a template based, which, you know, you can define your template. Maybe it's, I want to tell him, Hey, I've got a caller for you. Are you available to take the call? Or maybe it's, I'm just going to leave him a message that says, um, Hey, you've, you've missed a call. I need you to call him back. So this is, this is what the template looks like. I can send it to him. It's going to show up over here. This, in this case, I'm telling him to, you know, this user to call you back. Uh, but we're not going to do that. So let's just say that I asked him, like, hey, are you available? Um, I love that. I'll just say I'm I'm free now. <clears throat> Send Rick over. That pops up. So I can pop right back to my attendant console. And notice I've still got you on the call. And this whole time, maybe I'm talking to you. Maybe I've got you on hold. Doesn't really matter what I'm doing. But let's go ahead and... Just real quick, we'll hover over this again. It's really small. I've got several transfer options. I've got a safe transfer, which that just means if I attempt to transfer to this user and it fails, it's going to pull your call back into the attendant console so I can retrieve it and try to send you somewhere else. 
uh, I've got a blind transfer. We all know what that is. I've got a consultation call, which means I can call you first or call the user first and say, hey, I've got Rick on the line. Here's what he's looking for. I can kind of set up the call for you. And then I've I've got a um, I can I can do outward dialing where I can just send the call to some other customized format. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a safe just just to make sure back to your point, like the customer experience is is pretty important, I think, to companies these pa- days. Paramount, so, it's paramount. Yeah. It's paramount for customers. So yeah. I can honestly see companies leaning heavily on a safe transfer because you know how it is. Calls can get dropped. Maybe the user I'm sending it to, maybe their internet went down, they're working from home or they're mobile and their mobile network is not reliable and we can't, we don't know that for sure. We just know that he's available. So let's go ahead and send this over to him. So I'm just going to click again. I have options. I can send him to the, his team's identity, his Microsoft identity. I can send it to a voice directly to voicemail, or I can send it off to any predefined contact for that user. In this case, his business phone, could be a cell phone listed as well if I had that published. I'm going to send it. Exactly, that's exactly what I was going to ask. Can you send it to a cell phone? Can you send it to, you know, different mm-hmm. voicemail as an example? Voicemail is the popular one. That's like, oh, they're not, they're they're busy. I'm just going to send it over to their voicemail. Here you go. So, okay, yep. very good. Sorry. Go so ahead. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and send it directly to the UPN. And, and really what listeners need to understand is by sending it to the UPN, I'm not transferring that call back out over the PSTN. Right, so the call has come in through Operator Connect via G12, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this call. And traditionally, to transfer a call, right, you're going back out the PSTN to get somewhere. In this case, I'm leveraging Teams collaboration that's native to the Teams client, just like I would do a Teams to Teams call. That's how I'm going to transfer this call. So this contact center in the so Luair, when I say this contact Luair basically is leveraging everything they can inside Microsoft Teams. I mean, if you're transferring and you're staying Teams to Teams, uh, which, you know, is, is is great because you're 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 in that platform. You don't have to leave. You don't have to go off to another carrier. For uh, just a real quick factoid, customers don't understand this, but when you go out to the PSTN, I think the average hops used to be somewhere around five or six hops of carriers before it actually gets to the final destination. So here, if you've got you've got direct connectivity into obviously into your organization, so it is you know it's staying on net essentially all the way through. Yep, yep. So let's go ahead and transfer him. I just click the button. It's going to disconnect and move that call. It's probably going to put you on hold. I you notice it. it's still in the attendant console, but now you can see I'm being transferred. I'm going to pick that up here and probably get lots of feedback. So now oh, you, can, slow. You, you can see it's bridged that call together. And I don't know if you can hear me over your cell phone can, or, or can, whatever it is. You. Okay. So now let's say I'm talking to you and I've decided, you know, again, that came in from Denver auto attendant and I'm talking to you now and I realize, oh, you know what? The product you're looking for or the service you're looking for, we actually don't serve you here in in uh, Denver. I need to I need to push you back to our Washington office. Uh, I can do a number of things, right? I might need to, I might know who you need to go to. I might not. So in this example, what I'm going to do just from a team's phone perspective is I'm going to transfer you, put you on hold, and I'm going to send you to the attendant console in Kirkland, Washington, Washington, because I don't know maybe who you need to talk to. So let's just click that. I'm going to send you away. See you later. Uh, and it's going to pop it back through. You're probably going to get the Washington office greeting. And now, again, since I'm serving the Washington attendant console, I'm going to wait for that call to requeue. I've got it here. So now boom. it's uh, there's the greeting, and then boom, now you're back. And there it is. And yeah. I'm going to accept the call. And there you go. And it may be, it maybe it's a totally different user in this case that's answered that call. But as you can see, the you know the features and the functionality and the ease of use between the attendant console, the native Teams phone interface, it's really simple to just. 
click a couple buttons and move calls around as you need to. One of the things that we, we, we kind of skipped over it, like we just, we, we skipped right over it when you mentioned it, Brandon, I want to take us back to it for just a second. Syncing up presence between a contact center and an existing phone system. So when you're running a, you know, maybe you're running Microsoft Teams as a phone system and you are a customer of some other third party contact center solution. That's always a tough thing, isn't it? It's a, it's a, yeah, I mean, it's been a, a thorn in the side of the big, big contact center providers uh, because traditionally that's exactly right. A, a big company may have a Cisco uh, enterprise class phone system, but then they're they're off using, uh, you know, maybe a, a nice contact center or a, a five nine contact center. And there is no clean way to to bridge the gap between your back end workers, meaning your office workers and your contact center agents and knowing, Hey, is this, I need to send this call from the contact center back to a specialist that maybe can handle specific billing question or something and not knowing whether that person is available or not. And that's a great point that you bring up is from a team's perspective with our strategic partnership anyway, with Luware is we now have presence native to all users in the organization, whether you're an agent in the contact center, because guess what? At the end of the day, you're just another Teams phone user hanging off Microsoft, just the way that any office worker is. So, so there's two, two there's one more thing that I want to bring up. So that's, so, so this, the presence thing is solved here, right? It's all, mm -hmm. you're using the same presence across the, the two different, you know, the teams and the contact center. So there is no issue there. Here's another one that we run into that we'd run into with, uh, you know, when we're deploying our services with another, uh, uh, another solution, how about contacts, right? The context and we've talked about the context, the extent you've talked extensively a little bit about the context, but, but when you're comparing a, let's just say a contact center that is third party, that is not in the, the extended sort of architecture, you know, what about contact building to match the existing phone system? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I've, uh, for, for listeners that don't know, I came from five years at a big contact center outsourcing company um, and saw this all the time. Uh, where it's, you know, it could be spreadsheets where they're downloading the contact list out of one system and they're re-uploading into another, or they're trying to figure out if they can create an API to bridge the gap, to sync it, or both systems need connectors to things like Microsoft Office 365 to do the sync between, and, and it becomes kind of this patchwork um, to get your contacts synced. And then again, there's still that, that chance that maybe there's disparity there because, you know, you, you don't know when one system is, you know, calling home, so to speak, to get that sync versus the other system calling home to get that sync and whether it's manual, automated, whatever, uh, this solves that problem, right? It's I, all, I love that. it's all built in. Now they do, obviously they do support a spreadsheet format with, with Luware, but, um, you know, because you're already a teams user, I just kind of scratch my head and go, why would you ever do that? Why would you not just build your global contact list for your business needs so that, you know, I can then go create, um, or I, I didn't show you how I did this, but you can see here, this icon is different, even though it's small. I built a, a Google voice number in, so it's a custom contact, but I built the custom contact in Office 365 so that it's instantly available with no custom work needed for integrating. And now I've got, maybe this would be a, a vendor number that I constantly transfer. Oh, off. that's cool. That is great. That's an awesome, it's like build it into the, build it into your contact list and have your contact list available to you, no matter what format it is, internal or external, doesn't matter. It's still going to pull from that contact list so that you can just click, click, click and have transfer. The difference being obviously if you're going to transfer here, Brandon, that's going to go out to the PSTN to go retreat, to go connect to that user versus yep. obviously an internal call staying internal into the Microsoft Teams user. Yeah. yeah. And what's cool is based on the contact being populated in the O365 contact list, it's, it's getting its data from Microsoft. So Microsoft can already tell that, hey, this user's not available for a Teams instant message or a, a 
an email or you can't look at their calendar, it knows that my only option is to call out to the number on record. So if I do a safe transfer, it's gone just like that, right? It's just going to send that call out. Now, what I'm going to do, you're ringing here. You're ringing my other number. Can't see it, but you're ringing it. I'm going to decline that call. And hopefully you come right back into the. I still feel my phone ringing. Let's see. Don't let the voicemail pick up. I don't think there is a voicemail on this number, but I, for some reason, I think I went to reject the call and I missed the. That's what happens when you do real time demos. And it's and, gone. You, yeah, you my, I, you hit, I dropped. You hit my voicemail. Yeah. Uh, All right, there we anyway, go. the the point being is it's, you know, you, you get this real sync date out of uh, out of Microsoft. And the other thing that I was going to show really quick that's really cool is even before I, let's say, you know, a contact shows available, I can look at the user's calendar that I want to transfer to just maybe the, the caller is just saying, hey, I was wondering if if this person was available at three o'clock this afternoon, I can pop that contact calendar open. And yeah. right away, no. Oh, yeah, they're they're available, and maybe I can just proactively schedule the meeting with that user. I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> That's me every day. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic. What a what a what a great productive uh, tool that is. The attended console uh, from Luair with G12 Communications uh, over Operator Connect. I think that's so awesome. And I want to say, oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, here's the here's kind of the neat thing about it is you know when you when you kind of pull the onion layers back and you realize what's going on from a logic perspective under the hood it's the same concept as the contact center right call comes in blueware's reaching in with the microsoft graph apis and they're adding their logic to it to know hey here's the type of service i want to apply and they do the same exact thing with contact center right so now now it's just i'm taking the same concept of attendant console and I'm adding more complex knowledge to it to say, now start routing this based on skills or based on on option one, option two, option three type logic. Love it. Love it. Uh, so, so I mean, if I if I think back to uh, the countless conversations I've had with contact center managers, the two things that we just talked about, presence and contacts, that is an ongoing issue every single time when you have two different solutions and you try to kind of mash them together. Mm -hmm. That's not the case when they're, you know, under the umbrella of Microsoft Teams in the extended architecture sort of infrastructure. And again, with G12 delivering that via Operator Connect. That is so awesome. I think we've solved, uh, you know, uh, not the world's problems, but the contact center uh, manager's problems with these two things right here. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, oh, right ahead. before we shift, I know we're going to shift to text messaging. I mean, you know this, right? We've talked to at least two or three um, companies out there that as soon as we explain just that, where they're they're running disparate systems, again, it was that sit back in the chair going, dang, that's cool. Like oh, that wow. instantly <laughs> solves our challenge of we have no easy way to get it from this contact center back to our back office. Now you, now you do. Now you do. And Brennan's frozen. Or maybe it's me. All right. <clears throat> We're going to do a little bit of a shift here. We'll wait for Brandon to come back. I'm, there I'm back. I, yeah, sorry. My my uh, VPN just turned back on. There you go. I figured something like that happened. Okay. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, that is the Luair attended console uh, uh, via the extended architecture in G12. So let's do this, Brandon. We're going to shift this thing over to text messaging because all of our U.S. customers want text messaging built into Microsoft Teams and we have it and we have it and it works amazing. Like there's, we've always had text messaging uh, with our Teams integration, but it's never been this beautiful. And now the user experience, and I'm talking about the user experience, your agent and or your just normal person, uh, your user, your Teams user has the ability to use Teams texting Right. And it works just the, just as you would expect it, both on your PC and your mobile device. It looks and behaves the same on both platforms. So this is really, really cool. 
you know, you can send pictures, you can send, uh, um, uh, say not the gifts. I think the gifts are don't play, but you can, they turn it into a, a picture, but you can send the, uh, sorry, MMS is what I was looking for. So both SMS and MMS. So Brandon, let's show what the text messaging application looks like here yeah. in Microsoft teams. I'm getting my, uh, re re oh, repositioning. Yeah. I think that's, there we go. Let me get back to my teams. So the way I'm going to demonstrate this is I'm, I'm actually going to demonstrate it from a group perspective because I don't have my demo user set up for single channel SMS. If you know, Rick, if you want to show that I can, later, I can, can kick mine on in a bit too. Yep. But it's, it's the same concept, but the one thing I'm going to highlight is, you know, with, with teams, the flexibility here is that I can drop channel based SMS into teams so that if I want to propagate a single SMS to multiple users, I can attach SMS to a group and I can add members to that group. And that like the reason I want to show this is I feel like I get asked about this more often than maybe just regular SMS. Um, the functionality looks, feels, and operates all the same. The difference is now when a text comes in, if there's 10 people in my Teams group, all 10 people get to see that text message. Um, so, Rick, I don't know if you want to fire off um, a, a text maybe from your your Teams texting. Um, I'll send one from my cell phone. What's the number there? Let's just go ahead and It's 720-664. Four seven four two. Four seven four two. Hello, Mr. Teams. <laughs> <laughs> and again, this is this is all just built in via you know or, you know the Microsoft Graph APIs. We're just laying it right into Teams, and as you can see, here comes in a text message from. Uh, you know, I don't know if this is Verizon, AT&T. It's, it's Verizon. It Verizon's my cell phone provider. And obviously, two-way text. You can do. Yes. You know, i I can save, I can save him as a contact uh, up here. I can, I can say, uh, interested. Party. Now, obviously, it could be first name, last name, but again, I can I can have a contact list. I can have groups where I can send group messages out to multiple destinations. Uh, again, you can send. Uh, <laughs> yeah, want teams? Well, we certainly can give you teams texting only. Um, With the emojis in there, isn't that cool? <clears throat> yep. But what's what's neat about it is again, you're not you know, my, my favorite phrase, or maybe it's my least favorite phrase, swivel chair. You're not swivel chairing from one application to another. And where this is for me, where this is really, really cool is on the mobile teams application, because you, as everyone knows, when you're running a phone, you can have one, maybe two apps running side by side and you're constantly swiping up to get to the other app, swiping down to click on a notification. Whereas once it's embedded in Teams, whether you're on a mobile device or you're on your desktop, it's all inside of Microsoft Teams and it's all synced together, right? So this text message that you just sent me is also available over here on my Teams app in Get my mobile out of phone. Here. On my mobile phone, you can't I'm, do that. Oh, yes, I can. And I'm opening, where's it at? Teams. Which channel? I love it. Uh, yes. I just have mm -hmm. to go find. It's probably going to make me log in. For for you technical folks out there, uh, and for you even you carriers out there, you probably know the pain that is having different applications receive and send text messaging and then figuring out how to sync those applications so that it's a ubiquitous experience across desktop and mobile. This is handled by Microsoft Teams. It is super simple for us to activate and put into this with this application right here. So yep. having the same message sync across both your mobile and your think about compliance, uh, you know, uh, organizations. So government agencies, healthcare organizations, I'm talking to you out there, 
from a compliance perspective, you've got your text messaging across your team's environment and your mobile environment exactly the same and capable of, of capturing that information and dumping it into your, um, into your SharePoint. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, the important thing to call out is it, it will support, I can't remember the name of the, the compliance application, um, Glo- global, global relay, relay, I believe. Yeah. It, it can be plugged into global relay for, for compliance reasons. Yeah. Um, so it solves a, a, some of those challenges. That's awesome. Um, let's do this. I mean, uh, I'm going to show just a single user point to point stuff. I'll just yeah. show mine because one of the things that I want to highlight and let me, let me, uh, let me share my screen, everyone. Uh, one of the things I want to highlight here in my team's environment, and you can see it, the look at this texting application right here. It is just like Teams. You see the icon right there? It looks just like Teams. It smells like Teams. It just, I mean, it's really simple from an, uh, from, I guess, from a user uh, interface, just because what, I mean, it makes it easy for adoption is what I'm trying to get to, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you've got something that's really simple, that it's easy to navigate, you can just use it. For, the adoption is fantastic. So I click on my text messaging here. I'm bringing this up and we're we're ready to roll. There's a test right there. You know, I've got my messages here. Um, you know, there's the the message there, just back and forth there. Uh, obviously, you can see my test. Hello, how are you? Invoice is attached. Uh, and test. Uh, I've got contacts. If I can go build, Brandon showed you the contacts. I haven't built any contacts here. And then Brandon showed you from a group perspective what that looks like. But I'm just showing you from a user's perspective how simple this is to start texting. I can come down here and go, hello again. Hello again, friend. There's my message. Okay, and that's going to come up over here on my mobile device. It is copied in my team. So there it is. Hello again, friend. Hi, Mr. 9999. That's the end of my cell. Hmm. Anyway, so it's, it's, it's not the right piece, but hey, it's okay. It's the right numbers. So there is, um, you know, there's my text messaging again. It's going to come up here. Uh, there it is. It just pops right in. It's quick. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I mean, this is, this is what you want as an organization. You don't, you want texting to behave just like it does on your mobile device. Right. And that's what this does. It behaves just like it does on your, uh, native mobile device. And then, and then some, because we have some additional capabilities within the groups. So, uh, that's pretty exciting to be able to show text messaging and the Lua attended console, um, all in, in a single episode because, it's just, it's just really cool. Yeah. And I think, you know, the cool thing about it is that, you know, hopefully as our, our audience is looking, they, they start to realize that, you know, not only is Microsoft Teams phone a, a full function phone system and very powerful. I mean, there's so much stuff we could get into, like things we were talking about the other day about doing real time uh, transcription, but also real-time translation of that transcription into another language. You know, it's just oh, all of this flexibility that, that Teams phone that. comes with. Just just for a one minute, just to kind of, that was so amazing. We were on a call yesterday uh, and an organization had a, a user in, a, in a, a high density population of Spanish speakers. And now they can take calls. An English speaker can take calls from a Spanish speaker, have instant translation on, and communicate with that person. And that is cool. How cool is that? Yeah, me, I mean, the, the, the I gave the one, I don't know, I'm seeing if I can find it. I, I Oh, here it is right here. Uh, I'll just very quickly share. I know we're, we're uh, running up against time, but I'll, I'll just really quickly share this. Um, <laughs> where am I? Are where you as excited my... about this as I am? Oh, there's my screen share right there. I was, didn't realize I was still presenting. All right, so th- this might be a little small, but I, we took a, as a demo, we took a voicemail, right? We sent in the voicemail. It's recorded. You know, you got the recording in English, but you can see that when I did text to, uh, sorry, speech to text, we decided, Hey, let's, let's translate this to German. <laughs> so we, you know, like the, again, my point being, you know, teams from a, just a full function phone system and the flexibility and the, the powerful features and, and just it's literally click a button to activate these services. And then you take Luware and, and our texting solution and you put that on top and it's, 
it's like yeah. the the Ferrari, as you called it the other day. That's what I call it. Okay, quiz here before we wrap up. Here's a quiz, Brandon. I said there's two major reasons why you would want to buy a Microsoft Teams phone and different sort of, you know, components of, you know, call it Lou or the attendant console or text messaging. Two reasons why customers would want Microsoft Teams phone brand and go for it. What are the two reasons? Well, I, I'll confess I was a back of the room student that goofed off. But one of I'm going to guess one of them was it's the beginning of business productivity. <laughs> productivity. <laughs> productivity. Look at that. Look at this. He's paying attention. And, 22 and, episodes and he finally gets it right. And the customer experience. I don't know. And the customer experience. You got it both. <laughs> Everyone, uh, it's been another episode of uh, Everything Teams Phone Live. We want to thank you for spending some time with us. But here it is. If you're an organization and you are looking to improve your customer experience, or if you're looking to make your organization more productive, hands down, flat out, there is no other solution in the market that comes close to doing what Microsoft Teams Phone is doing today. And when you partner with an organization like G12 Communications, you're just doing the right thing. I can't express that enough. Okay, Brandon, why don't you sign us off, buddy? You know, I almost was going to wish everyone a happy and safe fourth. And then I realized we got one more episode coming and I'm not sure you're going to have to remind me who our, who our guest oh, is. Let's give our it. guest a, a plug. It. That's it. That's it. Real quick here. We'll plug the next one, the next episode here. That's a, thank you very much for reminding me. Let's go in here. We're going to share this real quick. Next episode. Let me share the screen one more time. Boom, uh, present here and the screen share and the entire screen. Here we go. Uh, our next episode. Oh, look at that. We've got, uh, I'm going to share here. this one right here. Here it is. There we go. June 30th from unifiedcommunications.com. Ryan Herbst is going to join us. And what's exciting about Ryan joining us is that Unified Communications has built and manages a store on Microsoft Teams. So if you're looking at Microsoft Teams and you see all those devices that Microsoft sells, the 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 MTR gear, the headsets, the phones, all that stuff, that is all run by Unified Communications. They are a Microsoft uh, gold, platinum, whatever, like massive partner. And, uh, and they deliver uh, an amazing discussion on equipment. And I think I'm going to put Ryan on the spot next week. And we're going to talk about meeting room, simple, simple meeting room components, because I think that comes up more and more these days where an organization says, Hey, I've got, you know, 12 conference rooms. I've got 12 meeting rooms or five or 25, whatever it is. Right. Uh, and they want to know what can I put in that room to make it easy? And I don't need this massive, you know, cameras in every corner solution. I'm just talking about, Hey, I've got a bunch of conference rooms. Take a, we work as an example, right? You know, I've got a bunch of conference mm -hmm. rooms in the, we work. I need some gear to put up. We're going to put Ryan on the spot. We're going to ask him, Ryan, what are the best devices to put in conference rooms next week? Maybe we'll talk about the best headsets you could possibly use with Microsoft teams, but it is going to be an equipment discussion next week to go through how to make your life easier with the right equipment. So welcome unified communications.com's Ryan Hurst next week. Okay. Yeah, looking, looking forward to that. And so then I guess what I will say is I hope everyone has a safe, enjoyable weekend and we will talk to you on Friday. The 30th, I think is the date. That's the date. Okay, everyone. See ya. Thanks, Brandon. See All right. Everyone. Have a great weekend. All right, there we go. Done and done. Done and done. 22 episodes, buddy. Before you know it, we're going to be like at 30 episodes. You, you know what Andy told me today? Mm. She's like, I'm a little butt hurt that I haven't been invited to the show yet. <laughs> you know what I told her? I said, <laughs> you won't be. <laughs> I, I wanted to say that. I, I, did, I did one worse. I did you dirty. I'm like, you're going to.